Testing one, two. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we ready. Somebody give God some praise. Hallelujah. Oh, come on now. Give God some praise. Glory. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. Amen. And all the time, God is sure enough good. Amen. Amen. I said God is sure enough good. Anybody a witness to that? Amen. That he's been better to us than we've been to our own selves. Amen. That he's loved us when we couldn't love ourselves. He kept us when we couldn't. We, you know he kept us because we sure enough could not keep ourselves. Amen. Amen. God has been good to us. Amen. Amen. All right. Tonight. Tonight. We're coming out of John 7 and 38. Amen. John 7 and and 38, before we get ready to get started, I apologize for my tardiness. Amen. I got caught on the phone and could not get off. Amen. At work. So I had to, had to take care of that and get on down to here. Amen. And tonight I will need to leave on time. Isn't that something? Come in late and need to leave on time. Amen. That's pitiful, boy. I tell you. Uh, uh, because I do, I do have another engagement I need to be at. Amen. Uh, with some family. Uh, I'm soliciting. Uh, prayers of the church uh, for my for my wife and her mother. She just been going through a lot here of late. Amen. And my wife has uh, been stepping up pretty much as a you know primary caretaker, making sure that everything's taken care of, and that can be very taxing. Anybody who's ever taken care of anyone sick know what I'm talking about. Amen. And so I solicit your prayers for for her. Amen. And her mother. Amen. Just dealing with some uh, some things with her body. Amen. And we just pray that God would intervene. Amen. And his perfect will would be done. Amen. Amen. So I, I ask you, if you would, to bow with me. Bow with me. We're going to pray before we get started. God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we need you in this hour. We need you in this time and in this season. Touch bodies, minds, and spirits. Touch each of us, whether they're here virtually or in person. Lord, that we would open up our ears and our minds and our spirit. Lord, that we may hear what your spirit is saying to the church. Touch this lesson. Lord, let us deliver it in a way that will be pleasing unto thy sight. O oh God, and let no flesh get any glory, nothing but you and your holy and, ma and matchless name. We pray all these things. Let everybody say amen. 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 John 7 and 38, we're, we're coming from this one a uh, verse where we have many, many, many uh, thoughts, amen, to come from just this one scripture, just so, so powerful, uh, something we've, I've quoted, I know, grew, growing up in the, amen, holiness, Baptist church, man, a lot of people would say this, but sometimes we take, we don't take time to really study some of the scriptures that we even quote, amen, uh, and so just, uh, this one, it hit my spirit, just felt um, something good to dig in and to uh, really look at. So John 7 and 38 says, He who believes in me, as the scriptures has said, out of his heart or out of his belly, in the King James Version, will flow rivers of living water. Amen? Amen. Amen. The word of God for the people of God Thanks be unto God. Amen. Uh, church, as we, as we read through the scripture, sometimes the greatest truths are found in some of the simplest verses. I believe that verse is, this verse is one of them. All of the things that Jesus said, this one verse could, could paint a great picture of what the Christian life should be like or supposed to be like. It seems so simple take, talking about rivers of living water, but we are the rivers of living water that Jesus is referring to. I believe when you understand this truth, it has the potential to revolutionize the way you view and live your Christian life. Amen? The way that we look at things, the way that we understand things, and even the way we receive things uh, is depicted really in this uh, scripture. 
Uh, there's, there's some things that, that are represented. We won't get to all of them tonight, but we want to talk about the rivers. We want to talk about the living water. We want to talk about the flow. Amen. And, and, and how all of this applies to us. Amen. Amen. So I said we're going to talk about uh, the, the rivers of living water. We want to talk about what the rivers represent, what the flow represents. And then, of course, how does that apply? How does that apply to us? Now, when we read this scripture, when you when you look at John 7 and 38, the scripture is very simple. He said, if if you believe on me, as the as the scripture says, out of his his belly, or out of his heart will flow, flow rivers of living water. Now, John, the, the joining text of this gospel clarifies what Jesus was talking about in the very next verse, because he says, but this he spoke concerning the spirit whom those believing in him would receive for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jews was not the, because Jesus was not yet glorified. And so when when we it, it often depicts in this, when you read that, it understands that while he was writing this, he kind of wrote a note down. Amen. Uh, because it, it's obvious that he didn't write it at the time when it when it just happened, when we understand how the scriptures came about, how they was written and how the oral tradition came. You know, he, you can see he said, but this he spoke concerning the spirit. So it was letting us know who, what Jesus was talking about. And he says, but who he's. Who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart or out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. Amen. Amen. And when we talk about the spirit, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. Let's be very frank and clear. Amen. Uh, because there's a lot of spirits. Hello. Uh, there's, there's, there's a lot of spirits, uh, but there's only one Holy Spirit that is a part of. Of the true aunt, the, the triune God, a part of the, the Godhead, amen, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Now, John, of course, he clarified that the Spirit had not been given yet, but these rivers of living water Jesus is referring to is the Spirit of God working in and flowing out of the life of the believer, amen. Somebody say, working in and flowing out of the life of the believer. Amen. This is the spirit that we're talking about that works on us and in us and through us. Amen. See, up until this time, the Holy Spirit will not come upon a believer and then de- it will come upon the believer and then depart because you can read even in the Old Testament, it would talk about how the spirit had came upon David, how the spirit had came upon different people, how it came upon them but he never really talked about it being in them. And then we even we can even depict it when when um, the prophet talked about uh, when he said that the Lord said, he said, this is what the Lord said. He says, I will not give you tablets of stone again. Amen. I won't give you tablets of stone, he says, but this time I'll write it on your heart. That's internal. Amen. External versus internal. Right. And so we all know that 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 God does not just want to be around us, but God wants to be in us. Amen. Amen. And so the Holy Spirit, of course, is is come to to provide and to give us some things to help us to move and do and live like Jesus told, talked and told for us to live. Amen. And so if we really looked at John 7, 38, it could be written so many different ways when you break it down into Greek. But one of the ways, one of the theologians put that I, I kind of like was, it said, whoever believes in me, as the scripture says, will have rivers of living water flowing within them from the spirit of God. Did y'all hear that? We'll have rivers of living water flowing within them from the spirit of God. This is the truth all by itself that can transform the life of the believer. Amen. I said transform. Now we, we have to understand that. And, and I'm talking about uh, I'm really, really wrestling with the rivers of living water. And so when we start thinking about rivers naturally, just rivers naturally, 
Rivers carve through whatever they're going through. Amen. Uh, when I say carve, I'm talking about it cuts a path. Amen. And, and when I say it cuts a path, then how we know this cuts a path? Because if you took the water out or if you took a stick and you stuck it out there, it's deep, right? So that means it's not the same level as everything else. It's, it's a little bit deeper, which means it has been cutting through that ground or that dirt or that thing for a long, long time. Amen. And, and what it talks about is how rivers flow. And, and we know that rivers don't go straight. Amen. I, I was, I'll be honest with you. I did not know. Of course, you look at topical maps and you look at these. I used to love uh, geography, read these maps and look at these different these atlases and things of that nature. And it would show them how they would kind of, you know, meander like a branch, or like veins that's in your body. Right. But I never knew how much they, they curved around things, how it went through things. It seemed like it. Uh, you look at the Tennessee River and one part of it looked like it's going up. And then the other part looked like it's going, and you're like, how in the world is it flowing like that, right? But we understand that a river always flows to the lowest place, amen? Water always runs to the lowest place. And uh, one of my um, seminary teachers, he oftentimes used to talk about how the spirit always goes to the places that have the lowest pressure. It's just like a storm system. A storm system comes and when it blows through, it always goes through the place with the lowest pressure. That's why we have bad storms in West Tennessee because we're on flat land and in low lying areas, amen? And so it allows for, for, for momentum to build because it flows down through those, those lower momentums, right? And those lower places. And so when we understand that the more humble we are, the more the spirit can flow. Uh, see, the lower we get, lo the more we lower ourselves, the more the spirit can flow. Because if we, just like water, if we are standing up too tall and it's too much about us, then the water gonna go around us, just like a mountain, right? Just like a, a, a jagged rocks or anything. The water just, it'll just flow right on around you, amen? Amen. But in order for it to really flow, we have to lower ourselves. And then in some cases, the river knocked down <laughs> high places. Amen. And you don't believe me? Go out to the Grand Canyon. Amen. Uh, uh, it's, it, 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 it went all the way through. Uh, amen. Hundreds and hundreds of feet of, of land and sediment, different things that the water flowed through. And so, but this flow is so important for the children of God because we need this flow in order to live a godly life. Amen? And oftentimes, the reason that many things get out of place in our life is because we get out of the flow with the Spirit. Amen? I, I see you. I see you. Yes, ma'am. You got a question? Mm -hmm. well, there's, a difference, there's, a, there's a difference between John uh, 14 mm -hmm. and uh, 738, right? Because that water on 14, he was talking about was eternal life, right? And this water right here is talking about the Holy Spirit, right? Well, let's, read, let's read it. Let's read it. Let's read it. John 14. We got a question. John 14. We're going to make sure. We're not just going to say it because I want to make sure that we understand it. Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Amen. Amen. Yes, that is living water, which is salvation. All right. Right. All right. So so he is talking to her about salvation. Why? Because if you read the story, uh, if you read the story in detail, uh, you have to understand when he's talking about living water, of course, that's where I, I got the Greek. Uh, I don't have it with me, but I got the Greek concordance for what that word actually stood for. Amen. But what it really was talking about life, period, because when we in sin, we are dead. 
right? And so, but when we, when we receive uh, what, what Jesus has given us, they're receiving life, right? And so, mm-hmm. that's 14, John 14, amen, yes, yes, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Talking about the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. But uh, he was asking them right there when I read the other verse about it. He was asking them to telling them to believe on what he was they was what they was being taught. Because I mean like uh, they were talking about he was talking about the spirit, but he hadn't ascended to heaven yet to Correct. Uh, so he, he you know to to, mm-hmm. to send the comfort back, which is the Holy Spirit. He hadn't right. ascended yet, huh? He had not not at, the, not at this part. Yes, okay. right, right, and that's and that's and that's what we did. We did want to make sure that we clarified that because that's what the writer. That's what John. That's what John told us that who wrote this. He said he was talking about the Spirit because it had not yet been sent because the because Jesus had not yet been glorified. Amen. 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 So you are correct. Yes, ma'am. But but he is talking about the same Spirit, right? He is talking about the same spirit. So we have to make sure that we, that we, when we look at this, I'm talking about John 7 and 38, when we talk about this flow, we're talking about out of our bellies, out of our heart within us, amen, shall flow rivers of living water. This is directly talking about the spirit of God, amen? But not only, see, because you gotta understand, what the Spirit does. The Spirit comes to lead and guide us into all truth. He's our teacher. He's our comforter. Amen. His power. All of these things come from the Spirit. And I can, go, I can go to many different ones and kind of break it down, but I'm just kind of making it simple in that when we understand that when Jesus is talking about this, this flow, he's really talking about this internal internalizing of, of Jesus coming, sending back to, well, God sending back the comforter as Jesus said he would, right? He said, he said, I must, even once again, he said, I must go so that the comforter will come. Because we talked about it in the Sunday school lesson, how that Jesus is, was limited because Jesus could only uh, perform miracles and do things of that nature where he was, right? So he could only be in that specific location, amen? But, but in order for him, amen, to, in order for him to expand his territory and to do more, he has to put his spirit within all of us, amen? Within all of us, and then there's no limitation, right? Because there's no distance in prayer. God can work in Russia just like he can work in America, he can work in China just like he can in Brazil by his spirit. Amen. And, and can I ask another question? Yes, ma'am. Because, no, I ain't never heard of him to say something. Okay. Uh, is it because you know that people didn't bleed, you know, bare teeth and fatty teeth, they didn't bleed it. And then mm-hmm. a lot of times that uh, people size you up, you, we gonna put this in real life. Mm-hmm. Because of where you come from. Because they didn't believe him because they said he wasn't no, he wasn't who he said he was because he, he uh, come from a, uh, come from a, uh, 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 Nazareth. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and if they had a such description, but they went to explanation, <laughs> they would have known where he's coming from. <laughs> that he was born in Nazareth. Right, right. So, t- mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It teaches me it would have, what I got out of it was uh, to make sure before you 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 say anything or before you speak, make sure you know what you're talking about when you talk about. It. Amen, amen, right? amen. No, that's that's very good. Um, it's, it's it's an old saying: don't knock it till you try it, or or until you know it, until you understand it, and even just like this scripture. We've, we've, we've quoted this many times over. I know I have, but Rhett never really sat down and studied it. Really sat down and just broke it down and really talks about it. But the first thing 
that he talked about, and this is so pertinent to what you said, Mother Lewis, is the first thing he said, he who believes in me, as the scripture has said. In other words, Jesus did, didn't say, don't believe me because of what I said. He said, but he who believes me as the scriptures have said. So he was telling them, go check my record. Before I got hit, right. <laughs> exactly. Because again, we have to, and if I give you context, again, who is Jesus arguing with? Really not arguing with, in this case, he's teaching. But who is he talking to? If you go back up to the 32nd verse and come on down, he's talking to, again, the Pharisees. He's talking again uh, to people in the crowd. He's talking again to the, to the chief priest, right? And so the problem a lot of times is, is people oftentimes will judge something before they even know what it is. And we've, you know we've all done that. We've all done that. But you know, like, this was their tabernacle. That was their, their feast day. All right, baby. You know, the priest brought the, the, the pot in with mm -hmm. the water. You know he did. Yes. Uh, Mm -hmm. And uh, with the water, you know, mm -hmm. and that's what he was telling mm -hmm. about the living water. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's different. It's different, right? Because that water was for ceremonial cleansing. You go. And see, Jesus, and that's what they was getting confused at. Jesus said, he said, no, 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 this is not ceremonial or religious cleansing. This is for spiritual illumin life. illumination for your life to flow in you because because we've hey be honest with you I, now now this is my experience so i have to say this is wrong right you can read things in the word of god you can go over it but until you've experienced it you really don't know you can tell me how good cornbread is all you want to but until i cut a slice and eat it. You tell me cornbread and buttermilk is good, all you want to. I don't know what it's like till I crumble it up <laughs> and put it in there and have it for myself. Hello, somebody. Amen. And, and that's, and that's um, some, some of the things in the church. A lot of times, man, we just need to take time in. Because the Bible said, he said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Ooh. And sometimes we, we've all done this too. We've all had some things on our plate that we really didn't want to eat. And, and the funny thing is, is, the older you get, you seem like your taste bud changes. That's, that's stuff I eat now that I would turn my nose up to when, when I was younger. Amen. But now it's, it's, it's good. Amen. It's, it's not only good uh, for me, but it's good to me. <laughs> Amen. And so, but, but, but Jesus is talking to these Pharisees, these Sadducees, because let, let us be honest, they was very good at religion. They was good at it. They lived according to the law, all them 600 and, 613, I think 662 of them, really. And, and he put that up there. They would, they, look, they would look it up. They would make sure, oh no, you can't do that. Oh, you know, go down. Oh no, you can't do that. Oh no, oh you can't. They was good at that. They was good at at religion, right? But what they they didn't have was relationship. If you really paid attention to what Jesus challenged them on every time, was that like the like the scripture when they said they says we are we talked about this in Sunday school. We are the children of Abraham. We've not been in bondage to nobody. Lie, 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 right? They were lying. They was in bondage right then. They was in bondage to Rome at the time when they said that, right? But, but he said, he said and the, but Jesus didn't even deal with them lying. He just said, he said, y'all don't even know your father Abraham because he was the father of faith who left his own hearing the voice of God, stepped out on faith and did what God told him to do, right? Was he perfect? Nope. Did he mess up? Yes. But did he follow God? Yes. Right? And so, and so that's the biggest argument here between Jesus and the Pharisees and Sadducees is, is that they were good at religion, but they were terrible at relationships. And that's why they put people in bondage. And they didn't have something up to know. No, they didn't know who they was dealing with. That, 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 uh, where they 
they might have did, didn't want to cut their skin. They were so fresh teeth. <laughs> <laughs> God, come to fix mm-hmm. them all. Yes. They were at Omega. That was the Lord of Rain. Right. All them mm-hmm. things that were the Lord of Rain. Right. And they didn't have to know that Jesus come to fix them all. Mm-hmm. To free them from it. To set them free from it. But, but we, we've seen that before. How many times has God come to set us free from things and we go back to it? <laughs> but, but I'm talking about, and I'm really talking about that bondage because, and I can put it, we, we, can, we can not go to the cliches that we normally go to. I, I can talk about simple things. You was burdened down in debt, owed a whole lot of money, and God blessed you to pay it off, and you go back and borrow some more money. Woo! Go back in bondage. You hear that? God bless you with a good job with great benefits, but you're going to let the devil trick you and lie to you, and then you're going to become ungrateful and unthankful and sit and talk negative and then not be a good worker and get fired and go back to that sorry job that, jo- that God delivered you from. We've done that, amen? We, we, we do that with relationships. You have a good wife, good wife take good care of you. She's wonderful, all that good stuff, and, and, and you're looking at, you know, some little young, she's not caring nothing about you. And you leave what, what God blessed you with to go to what's trying to curse you. Same way with men, same way with women, same way with our finances. And even in the church, sometimes we miss out on what God has for us because we don't, we don't open up to what God is flowing in us and through us. We've all done that. We've all been guilty of that. Amen? And, and so we have to be careful in understanding these rivers of living water and how God blessed us with these, these things because he's wanting us to bear the truth of the gospel in us. You do realize that's what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit brings about the truth of God's word in us. You can't have temperance, <laughs> peace, long-suffering, all these things in your flesh. Your flesh don't like it. Amen. Your flesh won't tell folks off. Your flesh want to cut folks off. Your flesh, your flesh want to fight. Your flesh don't want to act right. But the spirit, amen, when you, especially when I call it, I used to call it sometimes spiritual maturity, is, is that place where um, certain things don't bother you anymore. Certain things don't trouble you anymore. When I was younger, you know, there were some things that would bother me. I wanted, I, I wanted to have, I wanted to see, I wanted to experience, but now I don't care. I, I just, you get to a place of maturity, that, that stuff don't bother, I'm good, amen? Paul said like this, I learned. I learned. He didn't say, he didn't say I was born in it. He said, I learned how to be hungry. I learned how to be full. I learned how to have. I learned how to have not. He talking about it's a process, amen? And that's what the flow is. This, this, the spirit wants to help us process, amen? But we gotta, we gotta get in the flow of the spirit, amen? So when, when he says the rivers of living water, we know the first thing he's talking about, the Holy Spirit. In, 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 this, in this particular text. Amen? And so, what does the word, and, I, and I'm going to touch on this, now I gotta, we're going to have to get out of here because I got a point I got to make. What does the word rivers represent? The word rivers here implies something greater than a calm, quiet, or little stream. The word means a flood or overabundance. Y'all hear that? Flood or overabundance. Can y'all say that with me? Say flood or overabundance. See when it said rivers in plural, it talks about, it's really dealing with this word in Greek that means overflow, like a flood. Comes, it's, 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 it floods. Well, why? Why? Why is, why is that? Why, why is it a flood? 
Because when you think about anytime you see a, a, a downpour or torrential rain or monsoon or anything like that, the water flows into the river and then the river creates a powerful stream and then that water flows over everything in its path. Y'all didn't get that, did you? Because <laughs> this is how the Holy Spirit wants to be present and operating in our lives. It causes us to flow over everything in our path. Y'all didn't hear that. Woo! Because the Spirit, when it comes in, it, 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 when it comes, it comes like a flood. It overflows because there's some things that the Spirit needs to cover. Oh. I said some things the Spirit needs to cover or submerge. <laughs> we use that word. Right. What, what do you mean, Pastor? If you go and you look at the lakes, especially like in uh, Paris Landing or Kentucky Lake, those are flooded rivers. Those lakes are uh, even the, uh, the Grand Lakes, Lake Erie, Lake Michigan, all those. They're, they're, flood, they're basically flooded rivers. They have rivers flowing through all of them. Right. But they're flooded rivers. And the purpose of some of these floodings, of course, if you look at history, was for power. Uh, they would set up dams along these rivers and it would, they could use turbines to produce electricity. Amen? And so these were the great undertakings for these things. But what we don't really talk about or deal with is how they flooded these areas. See, many people don't know that in those areas, there were houses, there were gardens, there were fields, there were buildings and trees and other things, right? But you don't see any of them now because the water covers them. But I talked to a guy one time who was a diver and they, he used to dive for mussels, for shells muscle shells. And he says that when you get down deep enough, Bruce, he said that things are there just like they were 60, 70, 80 years ago. He said, you could see where there was a garden. You could still see it. He said there was houses under there, small houses, but they were still right there. Trees that had been submerged under water for, for 80 years or so, still right there. You could see them, but you had to go deep to see them because they are all covered. I'm, I'm, I'm getting to a point. And that's just like us, that ugliness in us. The Holy Spirit covers if we let it, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> The, the, the trash and mess in our lives is still there. But if we allow the Spirit of God to come in, it'll cover that. The, 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 the old injuries and the old things that we've been forsaken and, and things that have been done to us, they're still there. But if we let the Spirit flow, it'll cover them. And guess what, church? The only time you see any of this stuff is when the water gets low. Oh. So when you get in the wrong spirit, uh-oh, or when you don't allow the Holy Spirit to flow, then all of a sudden this old stuff starts showing, showing up again. These old injuries, these old attitudes, these old angry streaks and things of that nature happens when the water gets low. And that's how, as believers, we need to pay attention to our flow, how we flowing with the Spirit. Because when we start getting to a place where we're easily aggravated, we get to a place where we get angry real fast, we get to a place where we're unhappy, a place where we begin to get down, I can almost guarantee you it's because 
the, the water's gotten low. The flow is not there. And we're not allowing the Holy Spirit to cover that. Woo! Because some things don't go away. God just covers them. Whew. That's powerful, church. That's powerful. And I thank God for the Holy Spirit, that flow, because that's how we live this life victoriously in Christ, is we let his spirit flow and work on us. Because the more the spirit works, the less our flesh works. Oh. And that's, whew. yes, it's a flow. You see, he, did say, he did say rivers. <laughs> Amen. He did say rivers, right? Because, and, and the truth be told, we've all got low. Amen. Our water's gotten low sometimes. But we have to make sure that when we, read, when we, when we do that after this lesson, we need to recognize, I, I got I to get back. I got to get back in the flow with the Spirit. Amen. When I feel myself getting off track, when I feel myself going to places that I normally don't go. When I say places, I'm not talking about physical places. I'm talking about mentally and spiritually. Amen. We start thinking and saying and doing things that's, that's not in line with God's word is because we're not in the flow. Amen. And so when we look at that river, when we look at those rivers, we got to understand it's that powerful flow of God's spirit that allows a small trickle, a small stream to become an abundant overflow. And when you're overflow, guess what you can be? You can be a blessing to somebody else. See, you can't be dry yourself and help somebody else. <laughs> Matter of fact, rivers feels, they feel tributaries. In other words, they feel creeks and streams and all of these things. When the river's full, it keeps them full, right? But when the river get low, all of them dry up too. And God's trying to get the church to a place that we get to a place of abundance and overflow. That's why I said rivers, plural, because it's the rivers of his spirit that will cover us when we're going through, when we're dealing with, when we're not at our best. We just have to pray, say, God, let your spirit come and work through and in me so that I can be who you're calling me to be. Amen. Amen. Uh, this is our lesson for tonight. I know it seemed like it was uh, short, but it's 730. <laughs> Amen. 729 actually. And so we're getting ready to close. We're getting ready to close. And so what Jesus desires, and I'm closing on this, what Jesus desire, desires and what should be the case in the life of every believer is there should be an abundant overflow of the Spirit of God in our lives. So when, when, when things begin to happen and the rivers of life are flowing in us and within us, that people can come to us and get life. You hear that? And, and, and I do, and, I, and I'm leaving, I gotta go. I, I do wanna ask a tough question though. Do people come to you for life or do they come to you for death? I said, do people come to you for life or do they come to you for death? And, and I'm not, I, I, wasn't going, I didn't want you to answer, uh, Nikki. <laughs> that's what we call a rhetorical question. It's, that's something that we need to wrestle with. Do people always come to you with mess? Do they come to you with arguments? Do they come to you with stuff or do they come to you for life? Because what that, what that does is that shows you what's flowing in you. Whew. That's a tough one, ain't it? And, then, and, in some, and in some cases, we need to be strong enough to tell people, hey, I love you, I appreciate you, but I'm trying to get better myself. Amen? Amen. God bless you. We're going to pray and we're going to go. Amen. Y'all stand. Thank God for his spirit. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen.
Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you tonight. Touch our minds and our hearts and our spirit. Oh God, that we can receive this word. Help us to go back and study this further and to gain more from it. More, more than that, God, help us to examine ourselves and reflect upon your word, oh God, that we may grow stronger. Lord, touch Mother Maudie, touch her body, touch her family and those caring for her. Touch Mother Alma in the name of Jesus. Lord, touch her family. Lord, touch all those who are caring for those who are sick. Continue to bless Deacon Anderson and Mother Lewis and all of our elders here at, at Wortham Chapel, God. Lord, give them what they need in this season. Lord, we pray for Brother Hester who wasn't feeling well this evening. Amen, God, that you would touch him and heal his body in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, as we move forward, we pray for your grace and your mercy. Lord, that you would see us safe to our many different destinations. And Lord, that you would give us what we need even before we get there. And God, as we move forward, let your spirit flow in us and through us. Lord, that we can become tributaries of life. Lord, for those in our family and those within our acquaintances. It's in Jesus' name I ask all of these things. And, and everybody say amen. 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 God bless y'all. God bless you.